Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, we're at the top of the waterfall here in the goat paddock as a, another test for our off-grid micro hydro system. So when we did our last test, we were achieving uh, 22 litres a second off a 90 mil pipe. Now, I'm still in that phase of not quite sure how this is all going to work. So what I've done is I've found some um, poly pipe um, off a neighbour, so which was great. He's going to let me use it for a little bit. So what we've done is these two pipes here are um, 45 mil each, total of 90. So what I'm trying to achieve is the same exercise or same volume as when we were doing our standard 90 mil pipe. Now there's going to be a fair few factors in this with resistance within the pipe and things like that, but I've done some calculations and what I need to try and achieve is around about 10 litres a second. Now, I've still got that factor of then 50, so I can basically halve what I need to achieve. So what I've done is I've raced down to the local hardware store and got some fittings and basically made like a little manifold. And I've put that onto our 90 mil outlet from the dam that we built last summer. And again, this is purely just based on volumes. So once we know and we're happy with what we want to achieve, I can then work out what sort of hydro generator um, we can use here, and then look at something getting a little something a little bit more permanent put into place. Because what we've got here is that these two um, poly pipes are purely just running across the ground. So they're, they're not fixed in, nothing's glued, it's all sort of just holding there, just, just to make sure that everything can work firstly. But I've got the link now to where I want to put the micro, hydro, um, micro um, hydro generator. So let's go further down and we'll go to where the business end and um, we can go from there. So I'll see you soon. All right, so here we are, about halfway down to where we want to be um, as a part of the permanent setup of the micro um, hydro generator. Now you can see the twin pipes running through here. So they're the, those twin 45s that we are talking about back up on, on top of the waterfall. Now they're just on the ground. So as we were saying before, nothing's permanent. I just want to go through the motions of looking at the volumes, looking at the pressures, and I've got something very exciting that I've I had a light bulb moment about the pressure. So I've got this up and running and tested. So now that I want to see, I can explain to you a little bit better about pressure. Um, so here we are. So this is again, purely just as a part of our experimental phase. Nothing's permanent. I'm looking forward to setting up, you know, how I'm gonna work through this and, and you know, maybe I have to make, um, some timber trays or something of the sort so the, the pipe can sit in and and because I've got to protect it from the goats and, and I've got wombats running around everywhere I've got goats running around everywhere so these are the sort of things that we'll, I'll need to sort of factor in but let's go further back down into the gully and um, back down to the stream to the business end and um, so I'll just see you down there and I'll see you soon all right so here we are now I've set up a, a manifold system exactly the same that I've got at the top of the waterfall here. And I've connected the, the two 40, 45 mil pipes into the setup so I could attach my pressure gauge. Now, when I was going through these motions of the pressure, and I couldn't quite get my head around uh, last time when we were testing this uh, about the volumes. And I'm thinking that we had something like 10 PSI further up and, and so on and so on and so on. So, I was doing a little bit more homework about pressure and what I've found is that pressure is all based on distance and height. So, it doesn't matter how much diameter pipe I have if I want to do a static test. So I could run as an example a 90 mil pipe to this very point here and it would, get, and it would give me a, a certain pressure. If I ran a inch and a quarter pipe to this point here, 
it was giving me the same pressure. And I couldn't work out what that was all about. And effectively what it is, is that every 10 meters, and I've got a bit of a, a background in, in scuba diving. So what, what I'm finding is that when we're teaching um, physics and pressure to, to new divers, every atmosphere or every 10 meters is one atmosphere. So at the moment while we're on the surface, we're living in one atmosphere, which is 14.7, if you really want to get to the, to the money end. Every 10 meters you go diving, you're adding another atmosphere, another 14.7, another 14.7, another 14.7. And I was thinking, my God, it's actually working out to be exactly the same. So every 10 meters I have here from the top of the waterfall dam up there, I'm achieving the same figures. 14.7. I did another experiment another 10 meters down which basically puts us in behind the homestead and that was coming in at 29.4 well close to and effectively further down versus the top of the waterfall is 20 meters and so every 10 meters is equating to 14.7 psi. I got a noisy dog in the background there. Need some lessons naughty puppy. And that made me realize that what we were achieving further up the hill at 10 PSI, I wasn't quite reaching that 10 meter mark. I was more like seven and a half or something of the sort. And when I did my level calculations um, as the line of sight going back up, it was just, uh, just over 10 meters. My pressure reading here is 15.2. So that tells me I'm just a fraction over that 10 metre mark from the top of the damn wall. And it was perfect, an absolute revelation that I know now that pressure is going to be a constant. And so now that my concerns are is purely just worrying about volume of water. And which is great because it eliminates one factor, but also gives me an idea for later on is that if I need to work out elevations anywhere, I can set up a, a water source, I can put a pressure gauge at the bottom of the hill, and based on the pressure, work exactly out how high that hill or mountain is. I mean, it's a lot of things have changed over the last week or so. But in saying that, you can see that the I've got my 90 mil coming into this point here, and if I was to turn on this tap, You can see at that point there, it's got good pressure, but that pressure is all based upon um, resistance coming through the 90 mil pipe out through a three quarter. Now, the I'm hoping that the, the, the system that I want to look at has, um, I, I, I've got this little romantic notion towards a Pelton wheel or something of the sort like that. And so that's really what it, where I want to try and achieve to make the figures work for the Pelton wheel. Now they, most of those units run a 50 mil inlet going down to like a 1.5 water jet. So the volume that we have running through the system is going to work a treat. And I still need to measure that though um, with what I've got here today. The pressure we've got squared away and so now really becomes the point where I've got my 220 litre drum again, so we'll do the, the volume takeoff. But this is where exactly where I want to put the, the hydro house. I want to build it above this creek, you know, and, and this is where the pressure sits. So as long as I've got my 10 metres, I'm going to run across here. We're pretty much really out of the flood zone if this creek was to build up. You can see it's sort of, you know, top of the bank there to pretty much, I'm standing in it now. So that's the flood zone. And if I can come up a little bit higher, that'll be exactly what I want to achieve. You can see I've got a gate um, coming into the go pack just over my left hand shoulder there. So then I'm gonna run a cable, my power cable back into the middle of this paddock. And, and really what I want to try and achieve is a, like a, a, a sub, power station so to speak and that's where i want to house 
all the batteries and, and all the electronic gear from here and as well as solar. So I've got one hub where all my energy goes. And then from that, that substation, I can then branch out. Because we'll have, you know, we're going to be doing some developments here and I want to look at running a proper machinery shed and tool shop and things like that. And then I can run out from that one central hub. But I've got to check out the volumes now. So I've got to get mad. I've got to get mad by little helper. And um, we're going to go through the motions. We'll get the, the drum set up. We'll get some timing organized. And like I said, we, we need to achieve that 10... We need to achieve that sort of 10 um, litre volume per second. Um, I think we're going to get a lot higher than that, but that's what I, I really want to achieve. So I'll come and find you, and I'll see you soon. All right, so what we're going to do here is try our volume test on our 220 litre drum. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the restriction coming through the pipe to start with. So... Anyway, time will tell and we'll, we can check it all out. Okay, we re oh, are we ready? Oh, hang on, One, two, three. <laughs> Certainly a lot slower, a lot slower. So I'm already thinking that the restriction, yes, we've got the same diameter pipe, but the water restriction coming back down is already at, we'll need to have a look at that. Maybe that's why a lot of the people out there are doing it on single pipes. <laughs> that may be the case. All right, and stop. stop. What was that? 50, 50 seconds. Okay. Quick calculation. Um, was it just over? Just over four litres, 4.4, 4, 4, 4.5, something like that per second. So already, shivers, that's like we've lost, oh, what's that, 25, 75% straight away. Now, We'd have to look at the calculations, um, and I'll do that back at the homestead to see if that's actually going to work for us or not. I would almost be doubting it straight away. So, what this is telling me now is that I will certainly then have to run a single line. I've got too much resistance coming through both pipes here. Um, anyway, but this is what it's all about. Got to trying to work out the system, how it all works. So let me get some calculations squared away and um, I'll bring them back here and, and then we can work it out from there. So I'll come and find you and I'll see you soon. All right, so I've done some calculations and we're, we're close, but we're not quite there. Um, the exercise gave me on the exact figures was 4.4 litres a second. I need to achieve seven. So I've got to find another three three litres a second somehow. Now, at 4.4 litres a second, that gave me 190 watts, which is oh, about 4.5 kilowatt hours a day. So that's really not what we want to achieve. Going back up to seven litres a second, um, I'm more looking at around about that eight, eight kilowatt hours a day. So that, that's really where I need to be. I think the inefficiency of the manifold coming out of the top dam and then doing another manifold system down below, plus having the twin pipe system come together, there's too much resistance for the water to come through. So I think it's now time that we needed to spend some money. And I think what I'll end up doing now is just going back to the original, and I'm gonna go either 90 mil or 100 mil. Um, sort of set up coming back down the hill so that we've got the the volume there and 
I'll do a test on that and then we're going to have to look at the intake so we can't just have a pipe coming out of the wall I think we, we, we're going to need some sort of proper manifold system and something to clean the water and get rid of all the debris as it comes off the, the waterfall there so there's a little bit involved though but I think the the basics now is just we've got to get that that volume right and liters per second so I need to find another three liters a second to achieve what we want to achieve so that's the next process so for all about the trials and tribulations of trying to work out your own little um, off-grid micro hydro power generator like and subscribe and I'll see you soon